to see you today. Beautiful, beautiful spring day here on the last Sunday in April. You know, this year is just moving right along, and it's so good to be able to worship the Lord together on this Sunday morning. We want to sing at this time, Testimony Medley. This is a testimony of believers in Christ and what the Lord's doing in our lives.
the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. And we do offer this prayer to you that the beauty of Jesus, his marvel, his wonderful life, his compassion, his love, his grace, his strength, his purity be seen in our lives. Lord, I pray that we'll be ambassadors for Christ, that we ought to be, and that your will be accomplished in each of our lives. As we meet here, Father, we pray you bless, uh, meet the need of our country, of our president, vice president, their families. We pray you watch over them and guide them in and seek your face. And we realize righteousness exalts a nation. And so we pray, Lord, that they would seek you and do that which is right in your sight. And Father, we pray for revival. We pray for revival of holiness and righteousness in the lives of your people. We pray for hearts of souls. We pray that you would exalt yourself and exalt yourself in our lives. Lord, that we see your life in us and may your will be accomplished in everything we do and say, think and feel. We pray you'd have your way in this service. Glorify our Lord Jesus. Meet the need of every heart. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Turn around and shake hands. Somebody close to you. It's 1558. Uh, We're moving quickly toward our Back to God Revival tent campaign. And so uh, please keep this on the top of your prayer list. Pray for God's moving that the Lord will do a wonderful, wonderful work in this tent meeting. The tent meeting is July 2 through 6. And uh, we'll have on the 4th of July, we'll have uh, hamburgers and hot dogs for everybody on the 4th of July, and then continue in the tent meeting that evening. Brother, uh, brother uh, Mike Brewer will be preaching on, uh, on uh, July the 4th, and uh, what a, you'll, you'll be blessed. He's a great preacher out of uh, Apopka at the Victor Baptist Church. And uh, so uh, then Brother Jeff Ledbetter will be preaching uh, on one night and Monday night of the revival. And so please be right in your place for this Back to God tent revival. We'll be much in prayer. Uh, we have uh, some visitors today. It's always good to have company. Uh, we love company. Uh, and, uh, Brother Eddie always says, you know, tell the people, tell them, I, tell them I've got $25 to get you to you for them. Uh, <laughs> that wasn't exactly what he said. But, he... <laughs> <laughs> but uh, we, uh, we do welcome you. Uh, brother, uh, brother Chuck, uh, introduce your family here to us here today. That's Betty. No, this is my brother Betty and the husband. Oh. Oh. Oh, All right. Well, <laughs> I think I confused you when I said uh, Betty and, and he jumped and he <laughs> good to have you folk back with us. God bless you. Hey, you bet. Good to have all you folk back here. Uh, Visiting back with us again. God bless you. Amen. But by the way, I want to mention this. We have Sunday school class at 9.30. We have Sunday school class for everybody. We have a class for every member of the family. A boys class, a girls class. We have class for all of you. I'd like to encourage you to be with us uh, for the 9.30 hour for Sunday school uh, where we uh, teach the Word of God and where the Word of God is the primary text. This is what we use. Uh, and we want you to learn the Word of God. And, and so we encourage you to be with us. We have brother, uh, brother Blaine uh, Keister. Would you come forward, please? Yeah. Boy, he's moving slow now. He's moving fast. Well, go. <laughs> this is uh, this is your baptismal certificate, baptized on the nineteenth of March, and uh, congratulations, sir. Keep that. Uh, We want to encourage you to be back with us the evening service today. I'll be preaching, Lord willing, on a broken tooth and a foot out of joint. <laughs> that's, that's straight out of the Bible. It's straight out of the Word. A broken tooth and a foot out of joint. And uh, you'll want to hear this uh, straight from the Word. Tuesday evening fellowship at uh, Dot and Carol's house up in uh, Water Oak, 736 uh, Trevino Drive. And we encourage you to come along. We have a great time of fellowship. And... Uh, and then we, of course, always have a devotional from the Bible, questions and answer time. You could ask any kind of question from the Bible, and we'll address that. And we just have a great time together. So we encourage you to come be with us uh, on Tuesday night at the fellowship. Birthday of the week, Gary Norman on the 5th. And uh, I don't see Gary, but anyway, wish him a happy birthday. Uh, Wednesday night prayer meeting. Don't miss prayer meeting. Yeah, this is the highlight of the week. 
And we come together, we sing and fellowship and have prayer together, sick, uh, pray for the sick and shut in, and then in the news, a biblical perspective of current events, and then the message straight from the Word, verse by verse exposition. We're in the book of Matthew. And what a wonderful and exciting book this book of Matthew is. So much about the life and teachings of our Lord. And so uh, be with us in the sweetest service of the week, <laughs> Wednesday night, 6 o'clock for prayer meeting. Uh, remember the bridge. From Sunday to Sunday, needs a strong midweek support. And so be right in your place for this. Looking ahead, next Sunday is May 7, and on the 7th, evening service, we'll have Danny White speaking. Danny White uh, is a missionary. He's been in Costa Rica for 43 years. And what a servant of God. I've, I've known him for years and years. Uh, in fact, when, I, when he was in college, I had a business in Chattanooga, and he worked for me uh, when he was in college. And then he left and went on to the mission field, and he's been serving God faithfully down there, established uh, several churches, I think some 20 churches or so, all through uh, Costa Rica, just doing the work of God. And he's an exciting speaker. Uh, you'll like Danny. Uh, he'll be with us. Uh, that's next Sunday night, the 7th. And then the following week is the 14th, and uh, of course that is Mother's Day. And we have a gift for all the mothers who will be with us, and uh, we want you to have a special time for this. Uh, I think it's good that we honor mothers. We don't do it all the time. Scripture teaches you, but a special day set aside for mothers, and it's a Mother's Day. And so we want you to be here May 15th is Lifeline Screening. Father's Day is June the 18th. We'll have a gift for the fathers. And then again, please, please continue to pray for the Back to God Revival Campaign. All right, um, we have a special announcement. I, I think most of you know that Melissa Harrison had a car wreck uh, and uh, some uh, fellas off run the side, they're on the wrong side of the road and she got all the way off the side as much as she could possibly miss, but he still hit her and right behind the driver's uh, seat and twisted the car around, totaled the car. And uh, she was in the hospital. She's home. Uh, she has a broken collarbone and some bruises. But uh, she said, continue to pray for her. That's for Melissa Harrison. And uh, remember her in prayer. But the sister Donna is also uh, not doing well. And uh, BJ texted her this morning and said that she was sick. And so please remember these folks that are down and out at this time. Do we have anyone here for the very first time today? The first time visitor? All right, back here. These young men are over here, all right? We we'll catch these young men. Would you introduce yourselves here uh, to us? Right here. Okay. Aiden and Austin. And good to have you folks with us. Amen. God bless you. And then back here, what's your name, sir? somewhere to go to eat. See Brother Eddie after the service. He'll take care of that for you. Alright? Alright. Brother Eddie. Yeah. Stephen. Do you have any gift cards left? We usually get all gift cards. People yeah. give it to us for food and stuff like that and I'm always giving them away so she never gets to use them. <laughs> um, I would like to mention um, I would like to thank Louie uh, Louis, thank you so much. Uh, Louis and them are going to be leaving, go back up north, and he's filled in for the Sunday school class. And looks like my retirement's over, and I'll be back next week. But thank you so much, Louis, for filling in for that. Um, also, um, we're going to get this bus running, and um, I'm going to ask Chuck to help me out next week. We're going to get it up and get it serviced. And we got some folks. So what I'm going to do is get a, a, a sheet together. I know Miss Fletcher needs some rides on Wednesday night, so if there's going to be some folks that need a ride Wednesday night, Sunday night, or Sunday morning, we'll get that signed up so we can start a little bus route and uh, make sure we get everybody here. So we'll get that together and pass it around. Thank you for that. Um, let's stand now. Join with me as we sing at Calvary. Let's sing the first, third, and last verse. <laughs>
be seated. If our men will come, we'll worship the Lord with his tithes and our offerings. Uh, <laughs> Jesus saves. Let's sing the first, third, and last verse.
But by, by application, he says it to everyone who's in the service of the Lord. Everybody who is saved ought to listen very carefully to what he's saying here because it's so very important. And he's saying to the preacher, preach the word. In other words, he's saying, I don't want you to be preaching the reads, reviews from the Reader's Digest or the latest thing from Time Magazine. But he said, preach the word. Amen. He didn't say preach about the word and talk all about and about and about. He said, preach the word. Get the word out. Tell the people the word of God. Because it's the entrance of his word that gives light. And the word of God is quick, it's powerful, it's sharper than any two-edged sword. It'll pierce even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit of the joints and the marrow. And it's a deserter of the thoughts and intents of the heart. Mm -hmm. So he said, preach the word. That's what your job is. And then he says, be instant. That's a great word. We, we like instant things, don't we? I mean, uh, in our generation, we have seen instant potatoes, <laughs> instant coffee, even instant grits. Can you imagine? And we just want instant everything. We want something happening right now. Uh, and that's one of the meanings of the word here. In fact, though, the word that he's uh, using here, instant, uh, is translated a number of different ways. In fact, it means to be ready. He says in another place, be ready. And he says that we ought to all, always be ready. He says we ought to be, uh, in fact, he's saying we ought to be persistent. To persist is, is one of the meanings of this word. And then he said to be a, a full of exhortation, the same word. And, and he tells us that we ought to be excited about the things of God, that we ought to be zealous over the things of God, that we ought to be intense, one translation, uh, of this word. Intense in the work of God. You know what he's saying? I don't have any room for those who are lazy, those who are lackadaisical, those who are indifferent to the things of God. He said, I want you to give your whole heart. That was uh, your hand finds to do. Do it heartily. Do it with your whole heart. Give it your very best. Amen. And that's what he's saying to Timothy. And he's saying to all of us too, be instant. Be instant. And he says, be instant in season. And out of season. Now we all know that there are different seasons, uh, and uh, we have a spring, summer, fall, winter. We have the season. We have the season for the oranges, and season for the uh, or apples, and each one of the crops have their season. I was speaking to some young people one day. I said, "You know anything about the seasons, y'all? There's football season, and basketball <laughs> season, and baseball season. <laughs> but, but in sense, they're really saying the same thing because." That idea is there's a certain time for each one of these things. And, and so when he uses this in the scripture, be instant, in season, and out of season, he's really saying something to us. We're going through some different seasons of life. You know, then there's the newborns and the infants and the toddlers, and then there's the children, and then the tweens, you know, then we get the teens, and then we get the uh, college and career, and the young marriage, and then we have a bunch of kids, and uh, then we have the empty nesters, that's a different group all together, and, and uh, then we have uh, the retirees, and uh, then seasoned citizens, uh, and uh, there's different seasons of life that all of us will go through. I, but understand something. What he is saying is there's change constantly. Each one of the seasons is a different season. It's a change, and there's certain things that mark each one of those seasons of life. But what our Lord is saying to us today is this. And he's saying this to your heart and to your life, and he's saying something very important. He's saying there will be times when everything is going well, a wonderful season. But there will be times when everything goes wrong. And he's saying, be instant whether things are going well or whether they're going wrong. Amen. Keep serving the Lord no matter what. It doesn't matter what the circumstances are. Serve the Lord. Be instant in serving our Savior. Amen. Now sometimes we have... Uh, Everyone seems to like us. And when people like you, oh, it's a wonderful season. Sometimes it seems like nobody likes you. You know, you might be out of favor or you might be in favor. Serve the Lord. Amen. Whether they like you or don't like you, serve the Lord. Amen. This is what he's saying. Sometimes, sometimes you have plenty. 
Sometimes you even had a little money in the bank. And then had a great season, a wonderful time, yeah. And sometimes you might get really, really tight and everything might be really, really close. And you have two months, month left at the end of the money. And you wonder, what in the world am I going to do? Serve the Lord. Be instant, whether you have money to back or whether you're broke. This is what he's saying. This is what the teaching of the word. I mean, you might be so broke you can't pay attention, but serve the Lord anyway. This is what he's teaching us in this passage. Be instant in the season. And I see some seasons you just feel so well. You're healthy and hale and strong and man, you go skipping and everything just feels so good. <laughs> and then some seasons you feel sick and you're afflicted in your body and you get down. Serve the Lord anyway. Amen. Serve the Lord whether you're well or whether you're sick. This is what he's teaching us. It is so very important that we understand that God holds us responsible to be instant in season and out of season. It doesn't matter. We are to be a people who are constant, who are sincere, who are faithful, who are unchangeable, who stand for the Lord no matter what. This is what he's saying to us. Be instant in season and out of season. Now, in the matter of uh, instancy, if you use the word instant, there's a time element. You know, this instant, I want you to do something. This instant, take it instance. It's something that happened in a matter of time. And uh, in the scriptures, in the matter of salvation, the Lord always uses a present tense. And he's saying it's so very critically important to get that matter settled. If you don't know for sure, if you die today, you're going to heaven, you need to make sure of it. You need to do it now. Because you see, the Bible says we're all sinners and we're under the judgment, the righteous judgment of God, who says that he's going to bring every sin into judgment and we're going to stand before him. And the Bible says if we die in our sins, we will not enter into heaven, but we'll be cast into a devil's hell. Understand it is so very important that you get that matter settled, you understand Jesus died for you on the cross, paid the full price for your sins. He paid it all, and he cried, it's finished. And now you need to trust him as your Lord and Savior. And he says, now is the accepted time. Now is the day of salvation. Today, if you would hear his voice, harden not your heart. He that being often reproved and hardeneth his neck shall suddenly be destroyed, that without remedy. You see, it is God who gives you life. It is God who gives you your heartbeat, who gives you your breath. And God is the one who can take it away in an instant. You don't know when your life is going to end. The poet wrote, the clock of life is wound but once. And no man has the power to tell just when that clock will stop at late or early hour. On Thursday, there was a funeral of a, a girl who was in my camps. I used to have church camps year after year. And for about three or four years, this, this girl was in our camp. And uh, at that camp, she dedicated her, her life to the Lord. And she said, I want to be conformed enough to this world, but I want to be transformed. I want to live for God all my life. She came out of that camp, through high school, graduated, went to Christian college, married a man, and has been a pastor's wife for many, many, many years. But in her 50s, she died this week. Her time came up. Why that's true, I do not know. But I know that God gives us our breath. God gives us our life. And God holds us responsible for our lives. And he can take that breath away at any moment. And that's why he said, if you don't know for sure if you died today, now is the accepted time. Get that matter settled. Don't gamble your eternal soul on putting it off. You don't know about tomorrow. Boast not not yourself of tomorrow, for thou knowest not what a day may bring forth. For what is your life? It is even a vapor that appeareth for a little time, then vanisheth away. 
For that we ought to say, if the Lord wills, I'll do this or that or the other. You know, it is in the Lord's hands. And so, oh, I implore you today, if you don't know for sure, if you die today, you're going to heaven. Don't put it off. Put your faith in Jesus. Turn to Jesus from your sins. Receive his forgiveness and let him deliver you from sin and give you a life that's really worth living. In the matter of salvation, it's an instant thing. We must be instant in this matter. Again, in the matter of dedication, in the matter of a dedication of our lives, did you know the Bible teaches that God wants every Christian to be dedicated to Christ? We don't just get saved and we're on our way to heaven. But he declares in his word that we ought to all, all of us, yield our lives as sacrifice to God. That every Christian is to be a dedicated Christian, to be sold out to Jesus. He did everything for us, and we are called upon to yield our lives to him completely and yield ourselves, our future, our souls, our eternity, our lives, and everything about them. We are to yield those to the Lord. The Lord didn't save you just to sit on a pew. Amen. Thank you very much, Steve. <laughs> when the Lord saved you, he saved you to serve him. Now what the scripture says is by grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourselves, it is a gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. But the very next verse says, For ye are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus unto good works, which God hath before ordained, that you should walk in them. Did you hear it? God saved you to go to work for him. God saved you to serve him. And he says we ought to do it now. There's an urgency about this. Folks, listen, it is high time that we awake out of sleep, for now is our salvation nearer than when we first believed. Every day we're one day closer to eternity. And if we're ever going to do anything for God, do it now. I had a good friend who was a farmer up in South Carolina. And he had some horses. And he said to me one day about a certain horse, he said, that horse is getting long in the tooth. <laughs> Did you ever hear that expression? I had never heard that expression before. I looked at him and he saw the blank look on my face. And, he, and I said to him, what in the world does that mean he's long in the tooth? He said, you've never heard that expression? I know I've never heard it. What does it mean? Well, he said, when a horse gets old, that their teeth, their gums move back further and further and further. And uh, when they're real old, you say they're long in the tooth. Folk, I'm looking around and some of you are pretty long in the tooth. <laughs> And if you're ever going to do anything for God, do it now. We don't have that luxury of planning, so someday we're going to serve the Lord. We better do it. Do it now. Get involved now. Serve the Lord now. And we say, what can I do? Well, listen, we are called to be dedicated to His Word, to learn the Word. You're never too old to learn the Scriptures, read the Scriptures, love the Scriptures, meditate on the Scriptures, memorize the Word of God. Let the Word of God enter into your heart and soul and make you what you ought to be. As you see the glory of the Lord, you're changed into the same image, even as by the Spirit of the Lord. Amen. The Word of God will transform you. You need to be dedicated to the Word. Again, you need to be dedicated to prayer. Oh, this is something that every one of us need to do more of. And God's people, as they get older and can't get out as much as they used to, need to spend more and more time in prayer. Praying one for another, praying for the lost, praying for revival, praying for the sick and shuddy. And listen, God said he'll hear your prayers. You need to pray. Are you hearing what I'm saying? You need to pray. 
Pray to the Father in Jesus' name. Call upon him, and he will answer thee and show thee great and mighty things which you know not. We need to be dedicated to prayer. Yeah, we need to be dedicated to God's work, to his church. We're living in a time when people are forsaking the church. I'm glad to see you here today. Uh, the Gallup poll says, uh, and the Barna poll says, that more and more people are straying away. Listen, it's time now to exhort one another and so much the more as we see the day approaching to be in the house of God when the doors are open. Support the work of God. This is His work in the world. Amen. We need to be at it. We need to be dedicated to missions, to getting the gospel to the United States and to Canada, Mexico, South America, and into the whole world. It is our responsibility to go into all the world I'm preaching gospel to every preacher. Would to God we see this and be dedicated to what God has called us to do. We need to be dedicated to holy living. If there's ever a time when God's people need to be different than the world around them, it's now. This whole world is becoming more vulgar and more vile and more corrupt all the time. It's time for God's people to stand up and hold high the banner of the cross and live a holy life in this world. Be a holy for I'm holy, he said. And that's what we ought to be living. We ought to be loving his period. Oh, we ought to love it. He's coming back. And the scripture said about the apostle Paul, he said, I'm ready to be offered. And then he said, the Lord, the righteous judge, is going to give me reward that day. And not to me only, but to all of them also that love his period. You love his appearance. You long for the appearance of Christ to see your Savior face to face. Love his appearing. We need to be dedicated to these things that are really so very important. One other thing, listen to this. God holds every one of us responsible for people around us. We have a circle of influence. Everyone does. You've heard me talk about the Oikos principle, the household and every person's responsible for some people that live around them that you can reach that no one else can ever reach. Amen. It's time to be dedicated to reaching those around us. Amen. Dedicated to it. Consecrated to it. Working at it. Helping the other people to know the Savior. Giving out the tracts. Uh, praying for the lost. Speaking the word for Christ. Inviting folk to church and revival. It's time, folk. It's time. Be instant in this matter because our time is running short. We need to be dedicated to this business of serving the Lord. Again, the word instant, it has the idea of preparation. Preparation. I remember when I was called to preach. I was 13 years of age back in 19. And, uh, and when I was called to preach, my pastor said, if you're called to preach, you're called to prepare to preach. Mm -hmm. yeah. So you need to study to show yourself approved. A workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. 1 Timothy 2.15. You need to get in the word and prepare. Now hear what I'm saying. Everyone who is of the Lord's work needs to be prepared every day in this world to serve the Lord. Amen. When you get up in the morning, put on the whole armor of God and arm yourself to go out and serve the Lord. But hear me, we need to be prepared at any moment to speak a word for Christ. We don't know when our opportunities are gonna be given to us. Someone will call on you and say, please pray for me. You need to be instant. Be able to pray at that moment. Have no sin in your life. Be on, in, on terms, praying terms with God. Be in fellowship with the Lord. So when somebody calls you to pray, you can pray and get an answer to your prayer and pray for that person. You need to be instant. Be prepared. And he said also, he said, you know, be ready to give an answer to any man that asketh you a reason of the faith that lies in you. You need to be able to give an answer of why you believe what you believe. And it ought to be there on the tip of your tongue. You ought to be prepared to share that word with someone else and defend yourself for standing up for Jesus Christ, your Lord and Savior. Prepared. You know, we, uh, we live in a day when uh, it's not like it used to be. 
Now, at, at my mother's house, I'm going to give you some homespun stuff. <laughs> at my mother's house, if company ever came, she didn't have to run up to the store and buy something. She was prepared. She had enough food put back in the cupboard and all that. She could just go back and put a big old meal on there without ever going to the store. She was prepared for company to come. Now, I'm not saying that all of y'all do that, just when I'm coming by. <laughs> but the idea was that she was ready for unexpected company. At any moment, anyone could come in and she was ready. And that's the way we ought to be. Did you know we ought to always be looking for an opportunity to serve the Lord? He's going to give you an opportunity if you want that opportunity. You never know when that opportunity is going to come to you. Be ready at any moment, at a moment's notice, to share the gospel with someone. I ask you this. If you were driving down the road, Melissa was yesterday, Friday evening, Friday evening, and didn't expect to get cut off and wrecked and torn up. But if you were to be in that wreck and someone was laying there, trapped under the car, and you could speak to them, could you show them the way of salvation? Could you show them how to come out of death into life by receiving Christ as their Savior? Every child of God ought to be ready at any moment to help somebody else come to know Jesus. That's our responsibility. Is given to us. And God will allow more people to come our way if we're prepared. Because he calls us to be prepared, to be ready always to give an answer. Now he said the instant, in season and out of season, are you ready for whatever comes your way, no matter how good it is or how bad it is? Are you ready to keep serving God no matter what? That's the question. Be steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, for as much as you know your labor is not in vain in the Lord. Amen. Amen. Are you ready to say, I'm going to be steadfast? Nothing's going to move me by the grace of God. No matter what happens, whether people like it or not, doesn't matter. Whether I have plenty or little, doesn't matter. Whether everything's going my way or it's going against me, doesn't matter. Whether I'm well or whether I'm sick, I'm still going to serve the Lord. That's what he's calling on you to determine and to decide today. Let's bow for prayer. I'm asking you a question. Are you ready to meet the Lord? If this should be your last day, if this is your last heartbeat, your last opportunity, are you ready to meet the Savior? Do you know for sure if you die today, you go to heaven? Or would you doubt it? I'm asking you to consider very seriously this matter. You don't want to leave this world without Christ. You don't want to die in your sin. Now is the time to get that matter set. Now is the accepted time. If there's someone here this morning, you say, Preacher, I don't know for sure that I'm saved, but I'm concerned for my soul. Pray for me. Can I see your hand right now? Can I see your hand? You said, Preacher, pray for me. I don't know that if I die right now, I'd go to heaven. Pray for me. I'm not going to embarrass you, but I will pray for you. All right. I'm looking all around. Now I'm asking you this, child of God. Are you ready to start serving the Lord and make every day count? Every day, not some days. To be instant, serving the Lord with your whole heart, and your whole mind, and your whole soul. Father in heaven, I pray for each of us here. Pray the Holy Spirit will speak to our hearts. 
oh God. Let Christ be honored, glorified, praised. And I pray that you put a sense of urgency in us that now is the time. We must use the time that we have. It's high time that we awake out of sleep. For now is our salvation nearer than when we first believed. Help us, oh God, in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Let's stand to our feet. If you have a decision you need to make, and I can help you, I invite you to come forward. And we'll kneel here and pray together. I want you to have, when you leave here, have your heart absolutely satisfied that you're walking right where God wants you to walk. That you're doing just what God wants you to do. Come if we can help you as we sing together. I think you'll enjoy that. It's a little different. A broken tooth and a foot out of joint. Straight from the scripture. But I want you to hear this because the Lord has a message in it for us. Uh, sometimes when you read the scripture through, uh, that a, a verse you'll read over it and over it, and it doesn't really speak to you like it does. But I was reading, I read through Proverbs every year, every month, and, uh, and this stuck out. And, and the Lord says, man, that's important. A, a broken tooth and a foot out of joint. You, you don't want to miss this in the evening service today. All right, let's bow for prayer. Brother George Edward, would you ask the Lord's blessing as we're Father, we thank the Lord for what we heard this morning. Lord, you might apply it to our life, Lord. Sure, uh, this day might pass and we might live. This day might pass and we may not live. Our life is but a vapor. Lord, help us to realize that. Help us to serve you and be a witness everywhere we go, Lord. Folks might see Jesus in us. Thank you for everything that you do for us, Lord, how gracious and kind and wonderful you are. Pray for each one that's here today, Lord, and just be with us. Be with us this day, rest of the day. In your name we pray, Father. Amen.